Tuesday morning to all in Philadelphia and beyond. It is 76 degrees and sunny today in the city. I can, uh, I think I can say Tyler and Renee will be here in one second. Uh, I think I can officially say that the winter jackets can go away and it's flip flop season. Well, it depends on for who. For you, they never came <laughs> out. I think that they, you, you might have just uh, gone scorched earth with your winter jackets at one yeah. point. But so for we most. Made it. For most normal human beings, yes, you are correct. We made it. We made it, folks. We're in springtime, and when I think springtime and the weather getting warmer, uh, that means hitting season is approaching, we hope, because the Phillies could use a little bit of offense. We'll get into all the nitty-gritty of last night's terrific win. I don't want to come off as a uh, a negative Nancy there uh, with my – but, you know, there's some things the Phillies can improve on still. Uh, but a really, really nice win last night in St. Louis. There's a lot to get into today. Uh, more elbow issues around Major League Baseball. Some Hall of Fame pitchers have come out with comments about the elbow issues uh, that are facing Major League Baseball. You know, the Phillies have a chance to take another series here, setting themselves up nicely. Uh, a couple great storylines in the game last night. Uh, now, Tyler, if I was to ask you, and we'll ask Renee here in a second, who was the more impressive storyline last night to you, Spencer Turnbull or Johan Rojas? Spencer Turnbull. Okay. Um, that, that means way more to me. Uh, listen, I, I'm happy that Spencer, uh, that, that Johan Rojas uh, collected a, a couple hits and, and he looked more comfortable to play today than he, or yesterday than he had at any point in the course of the first eight games of the season. But Spencer Turnbull was good again. Yes, he was. And Spencer T Turnbull uh, was terrific last night. He really was. Um, so far, in two games now, Renee, Taiwan Walker is sweating <laughs> watching this man potentially take his job. Now, the nice thing here is uh, Taiwan Walker is going to be on, and I do this in quotes for the podcast listeners, a month-long rehab assignment. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you drop four or five miles in your velocity, you got to kind of get that strength back. So they're going. It's kind of like perfect in a way because you give Taiwan uh, the length of time needed to bounce back, while also finding out what Spencer Turnbull is. And now through two games with the Phillies, eleven innings pitched, five hits, one run allowed, zero earned runs. Only one walk mm. and 13 Ks in two starts. He was effectively wild a little bit in the first three innings last night and then kind of settled in and was just effective. He got out of some jams. He looked the part. Uh, we could have a, uh, a an all-time bargain bin shopping uh, gold mine on our hands here if Turnbull can continue this. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing that makes – Spencer Turnbull's performance so exciting because it's it's a surprise and you got him for so cheap. I know I believe it was Matt Gell put out a piece today. Yeah, I just read it was a really about, good piece. Yeah, talking about how you know how the Phillies acquired Spencer Turnbull and that a Phillies scout had gone out to see Spencer David on a Friday, Chad. David right? Chad. Going out to see Spencer on a Friday in February. They offered him a contract the next day. Um, they agreed the day after that. It was a two million dollar investment that honestly has panned out really well. And how that small investment, you know, when Spencer was signed, there's there's different names that you know the Phillies had brought in that we kind of were like, who, what, what are they going to help? Another small deal and. I hate to say it, um, and I've been saying this a lot lately because, you know, between all the offseason moves, some of them have actually panned out well, and this is one of them. And for Spencer Turnbull uh, to come in and have, as you mentioned, and those 11 innings pitched really steady uh, yesterday, just gave him two hits in his six innings pitched, one walk and six strikeouts, zero runs. Spencer Turnbull looks steady. This is what you want from your bargain five, your you know, your fifth starter that you added last minute. Um, but to your question about who's more impressive, I think it's Johan Rojas for me. 
by it being super biased because they're both impressive in different ways. Spencer, because you're he's just such on a bargain, Michael Barkan saying, "Yo, Ro, cloud nine. Let's not, <laughs> let's not sugarcoat Michael this Barkan one." Michael Barkan said on the broadcast, "Yo, Ro," and I swear he clearly has heard the show. Um, Michael and you B's guys, a good man. Listen, I sprinkle it out to Preston Mattingly. I sprinkle it out to various coaches when we were down at spring training. It's We've all been you. telling people, "Yo, Ro," I see it in the chat. K Red, "Yo, Ro" is the most impressive, and not just because of his three hits, the RBI. But also, I just loved seeing yesterday when he got on base and he did his little celebration, guys. You know, and he did his, I was, it's a team. It's the new team celebration. It's apparently a video gamer. I, but he move. hasn't had a yeah, chance. It's, it's, it's sketch. sketch. It's sketch. He hasn't had a chance to do it. You know, he hasn't. And I was like, finally, like you get. And then later in the game, he got on the base. He did a little clap. I'm like, oh, you know, those those little things. That's such a confidence builder. He played great at center field as always. Well, I found his kink. I, I, his offense comes from his defensive great plays. Yeah, because he was playing. He kink. did play really well, so, and it carried over and translated directly into his at bats. Now that now the Phillies pitching staff and Caleb Cotham has to figure out a way uh, to every game early mm-hmm. in the first three yeah, innings going. get one ball somewhere in a gap that Johan can can catch right. in a spectacular fashion. And then that'll really get his offense going. So we discovered his kink last night. So that's good to know. Speaking of fashion, we're getting some fashion compliments in the chat. K Red's coming in, uh, mentioning he likes both of our outfits. Oh. Yeah, he likes my hair with the jeans. Thank you. And your shirt working well with the solid white hat. Look at you. Oh, fashion, it's, it's a fashion it's like model. a fog gray hat. <laughs> mm. Mm, um, so fashionable. Yeah. Though, JB. Uh, but yeah, Johan <laughs> Rojas really. Um, there was a noticeable difference in his swing last night. There and was. this man owns St. Louis. He's six. Actually, I might have missed his last at bat last night. But he, at one point, he was six of 10 in appearances in mm-hmm. St. Louis. Uh, so, you know, baseball is a weird sport for many, many reasons. One of the weirdest is guys performing particularly well in certain ballparks, whether it be sight lines, comfortability, yeah. whatever it may be. It took uh, an Yo- eclipse. Yoro owns St. Louis. It took an eclipse and baseball heaven yeah. for us to get Yoro out of his shell. But I do feel like, as you mentioned, it's ironic because I, we all had different responses. We, cl- we were not watching together, but after he got his first hit... And he made a couple really nice plays. He had the diving play in center field early. I think it was like the was second s- inning or so. I want to say the second inning yeah. because they got and a hit was, r- the next inning right after. It, right. Like, and so I in that moment, I was I actually was saying to myself, I was like, wow, Yoro, you know, I know he's not getting the at-bats we want, but that was a really stellar, clean play. And he made it look easy. He did make and that then, look easy. And, that and was then he not turned an around and play. got a hit the next, I, I guess it was after that. And I was like, Okay, you know, this is steady. And so I was so focused on, wow, he's playing well at center field. I almost was even like, you know what? His at-bats are going to come, and they did yesterday. I wasn't expecting yesterday. But it was that moment of, like, you could see the confidence translating into his at-bats. Yeah, his bat actually looked aggressive. It, it looked did. like he, sw- he, he swung through the zone, like, aggressively, where mm-hmm. his bat speed before yesterday had looked like absolute dog <laughs> shit. Uh, it looked like he was swinging through quicksand. But you saw his bat head get around quick, and attacked the ball last night. So knock on wood. Hopefully, you know he kind of is putting it together here. And, and to raise um, his batting average from a .045 to .154. Well, the worst part. <laughs> I mean, that's great for him. The worst part Kudos. of all of this is he now has a higher OPS than Nick Castellanos. Worst, concerning, uh, that's struggling. I mean, Nick Castellanos. Listen, we we went from the good to the bad. I, quickly, fast. just because Yoro eclipsed him like by like I think like point eight. Well, oh, Yoro actually, when you look at yesterday's game between his center field plays and his at bats, Yoro and the bottom of the batting order as a whole was the reason why the Phillies won that game. Yeah, it was. It was well. I mean, obviously, Alec, Alec Bohm was in Alec the four Bohm hole. Had some big old nuts yeah, coming up. He in was, extras. Yeah, that yeah. was. But I mean, it was it was Garrett Stubbs, it was Brandon Marsh, it was Johan Rojas, even putting them in that position to win in ten. And then of course Alec Bohm. It was the daycare. It was the bottom of the batting order. It wasn't even the usual heavy hitters that were the reason why the Phillies won that game. Nick Castellanos, uh, I guess he's still hiding behind the moon. We're still waiting for him. Yeah, I mean, the hope, he's a minus .6 war right now. Uh, it's small sample size, 34 at-bats. Uh, but he's batting 114. 
His OPS is 358. If I'm going to get on Johan Rojas for a sub 500 OPS, uh, we certainly have to talk about Nick Castellanos' yeah. 0.348, or th excuse me, 0 0.358. I don't want to shortchange him there. Uh, OPS. That is um, horrendous. He, he looks really lost up there. You, we just have to hope that this is a cold streak for him and not becoming his norm. I don't think it is um, his norm yet, but I'm starting to have those thoughts. Uh, yeah. It's it's a little concerning, a little concerning here. Uh, not not full fledged panic yet, but uh, <laughs> definitely on my worry radar. I feel like we're like we're getting to sweats now. A little bit when you're like trying to stay calm and cool and collected, and you're like sweating a little bit. It's like okay, this is okay, everything's fine, this is fine. As the flames are growing bigger and bigger around us, his OPS um, plus is three. He also I've just had a mo that. he had a moment late in the game, and I was like, come on, Nick, just just give us something, and he gave nothing. Um, but it's I think what makes it worse is. You know, you're seeing Brandon Marsh, who's becoming my favorite Philly right now. He's awesome. Full disclosure. He's, I just, I, I'm all about like passion and energy. If you can't tell, that's my personality. He did like, not seem to know excited. where the wall was last not night. Not at all. He made Bob Ford with a great catch late, but like that one earlier, it seemed like he didn't know where the wall uh, was. And like, <laughs> if he had just gone another step, he would have caught that home run ball. Right. But he can't, but, he can't pitch him. But before. then he made up for it later. He did. And what I will say is he's someone that. You just feel like that contagious energy that he's bringing uh, at consistency. You have Yoro who finally, finally got the at-bats going. You got Spencer Turnbull on, on the pitching side. The, the pitching looks great. Knock on wood. Please continue. The bullpen, you know, everything's slowly ERA. coming around. It's yeah, just, I mean, the starting pitching is tremendous. Uh, Nick <laughs> Where are is, you? Where Nick are you, Nick? needs to, I don't know what the solution is here. Uh, maybe he's thinking too much about his chase rate uh, and his approach every time, but he looks flat out uncomfortable in the batter's box. Um, you know, off the field, he still got kind of got his swag going. I saw him out there with the glasses yesterday, and the yeah. and the and the trendy. You know, he's a little bit of a fashion guy. He is. Um, but when he gets in that batter's box, there's no swag. There's no confidence. No, it's gone. He, he looks. He looks like bad up there, there were actually even some plays to right field that i kind of felt like he was just i mean it was it was good it wasn't bad but i just something feels off about his his whole vibe right now and energy and i i think he's in he's definitely it's between the ears for sure now at this point um i think maybe scooby needs to have a chat with him but you know I, he, seems, he kind of has this blank look too where he doesn't seem there you know even when they show him walk in the dugout or anything like that. Like any, any shots I feel like of Nick, he just seems a little bit caught in a fog right now. Not sure what's going on there. Um, but yeah, maybe I would send him and Trey snack. Turner to an ayahuasca retreat in the wilderness where they go into a hut for like two or three <laughs> days, uh, do some hallucinogenics, mellow out and, uh, find themselves again. The crazy thing is like some mushroom tea. Yeah. You can go, uh, to Mount Vesuvius and then realize you've never <laughs> even been to Mount Vesuvius? The crazy thing That's is Trey had his today. third, third multi-hit game of the year, uh, gets the RBI, obviously big. He, so he's still, Trey is not giving us full games, but he's giving us sprinkles of plays here and there. It's not good either. And we want, you definitely expect more from Trey. But at least he's giving you a hit here and there. He's better than, an he's better than Nick there, Castellanos but Nick's right not now. giving anything. I mean, 04, you're just, you're literally out there. A, a, just a goose egg every time he steps up. And I, I'm going to pull up his overall again. Yeah, let's because get some mushroom tea going for those boys. Think, Mellow out. I think they're in their own heads. Uh, at least that's my positive outlook on it. Yeah, I don't. I don't feel that way about Trey Turner after the last couple of days, and I, and I understand he's that he's just had too many at bats the, where he looks lost. Well, see, I I would not disagree he looks good with on you. Sometimes. I would not disagree with you in the first couple of games of the year, but I think even in he smoked a couple. I think of balls, even in the national said. series, he's hit the ball well. Oh, and I we think, talked about it. What was it? Ninety nine miles. Yeah, an hour or and something? so I think that like the results will come. I would rather him be in this spot than to feel lost because if he's in this spot, that means that. The swing is there. The approach is there. The trajectory is there to, at some point, get the results. This is a fickle game. And, and some, the Phillies are having some bad luck. Yeah, no doubt and about and it. I think that they've probably, over the last three games, let's say Saturday, Sunday, and yesterday, probably have run into about five, maybe six outs where they scorched a ball. 
Oh, so and, I hit, have it, it, right and hit it right at somebody. Bryce Harper's double play last night had an expected batting average of 560 and left the bat at 104 miles an hour. That's what I'm saying. They're and getting gloved to yeah, that I mean, a little bit. They're, they're putting bat on ball, and, and I'm not going to complain about that. But Nick isn't. No, that's why I'm, I'm Trey specific, is, Trey is specifically making contact. speaking yeah, about yeah, yeah. Trey Turner. And I know that's the thing. Like, I know in the chat, people are bringing up how Trey, Trey you he's know, he he's has hit the had, ball well a couple times. He has. He has. And so I'm far, not worried Trey's, about him. I'm worried Trey's about him. Trey's got nine hits, and three of them came last night. And again, that's three multi hit games this season. Um, he, d- he has at least in the last four games he's played that he's had a hit in every game except one. So he's had it. You know, he's, he's giving you more. Not to mention, of course, yesterday he did have that RBI. It's just the fact that I think the expectation, we can all agree, the expectation for Trey is just higher than this. Like, he's at least giving you hits. He's at least giving you, you know, he's got a a couple of RBIs. He's giving you something, but this is not the expectation for Trey. This is actually more the expectation for, like, a Johan Rojas. The expectation for Trey is is to give you better in his hits, better in his at-bats. So I, I do agree. I know people are like, Trey's chilling, Trey's fine. Yeah, like, for where he's starting right now, it's it's meh. It's okay. But Nick, on the other hand, another game where you have zero hits to have in the, in your 25 at bats to start off the season, one total hit is bad. He's not even like barreling the ball. You're not even getting all, you're not right. You have zeros. Everything is zeros across your stat line. 25 at bats, one hit, as you mentioned, his OBP of a 0.172, um, slugging at, and his batting average at a 0.04. He's not giving you literally anything. At least, yes. So we all, it's just bad. We all agree. He needs some mushrooms. He needs some Scooby snacks. Something. Something. Something's got to hit. Going to a hut Maybe in the he woods needs, and... maybe he needs some Olipop. Maybe he needs some delicious, that's refreshing soda that's going to allow him to, maybe it's his gut health, his digestive health, because guys, there Could are be. problems where two out of every three Americans are dealing with digestive health issues. And maybe one of those guys is, is Nick Cassiano's. <laughs> But over at Alipop, in all seriousness, they are a soda that gives you a classic soda taste with a twist. And that twist is health and making sure that you're drinking something that's going to allow you to feel good. And now Alipop is delicious. You can see it right here over my shoulders. They have a ton of different flavors and variety for you to check out. And honestly, they are so good and flavorful. It doesn't even taste like you're drinking something healthy. Cherry cola, strawberry vanilla, cream soda, classic root beer, Classic cola, vintage cola, I should say, orange squeeze, um, a lemon lime flavor, lots of drinks. They are good as a root beer float, good as a mixer, or good just straight up as a nice refreshing soda. And with Olipop, you get sugar. They have they're lower in sugar. It's only two to five grams of sugar per can. They also have a lot of different health benefits in the sense that you've got prebiotics, not probiotics. You've got plant-based fiber. You've got other botanical ingredients that really just support your digestive health, your gut health. And also with Olipop, now that they've launched officially in Wawa, you have the chance to buy Olipop in over 30,000 retailers nationwide. So for all of us that have Wawa nearby, you can go get your hoagie, go get your Olipop, eat good, drink a nice refreshing Olipop. Nine grams of fiber per can, again, less grams of sugar, and also now conveniently located in Wawa, in Sprouts, GoPuff, Target, Wegmans, um, ShopRite, easy to find. And if you don't feel like going to the store, you can also shop online for Olipop at drinkolipop.com or on Amazon. So use the code PHLY20 for 20% off of your next Olipop order. That discount does only apply to one-time orders, not to subscriptions. And again, Olipop is sold online at drinkolipop.com on Amazon or in 30,000 retailers nationwide. Gives you a chance to get right, get back, and make sure that you're feeling good while you're drinking some delicious, refreshing Olipop. Well, this weekend, uh, you know, I try not to drink uh, during the week, uh, but this weekend I will be drinking some cold, delicious Miller Lights, I can tell you that, because it's the Beer Drinker's Light Beer, and a lot has changed over the years, but since 1975, Miller Light has remained the best, the most refreshing, the cleanest drinking light beer. It's the Beer Drinker's Light Beer, uh, and to this day, it's still the best one. Uh, It's stood the test of time, and it's still on top. Miller Lite has more of the taste you want and less of the stuff you don't need or care about. And when friends or family are around or you're heading down to tailgate the fills or you're in the stadium, uh, the beauty of Miller Lite is you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer because anybody that's selling beer knows they got to have the best light beer out there. And that's Miller Lite. 
and it's summertime and it's time to uh, tighten up those waistlines, people. <laughs> uh, you got to be smarter about the intake in these months as we're getting ready for beach season. And Miller Lite is that. It's not going to give you that bloated feeling. And it's only 96 calories per 12 ounces. It's a light beer that tastes like beer. So it's pretty simple formula. Uh, it's good for you uh, in comparison to other beers. Uh, and it tastes like a damn beer. And it's good. And it hits the spot every time, especially when friends and family and sporting events are going on. Uh, so times change. But you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time to get to Miller Lite. Uh, delivered directly to your door. If you don't want to leave the house, you can go to MillerLite.com slash P-H-L-Y-Fills, or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories per 12 ounces. All right, one of the things last night that uh, I'm not, I'm going to get quickly back to the positive, but I did just want to hmm. mention, I'm going to butcher his name again, oh. Miko Loss. Oh, my nope. gosh. Miko wow. Loss. Nope. Seriously? Miko Loss. And like even when you watch still and you no. hear it, it doesn't it doesn't register? Nope. You could say it about nine times, still no. Okay. The the Greek pitcher the Greek. for the Cardinal. <laughs> um you let him go seven innings last night. Tyler thought he was a little better than I was. I thought the Phillies missed a couple opportunities. We talked about that. You know, Bryce Harper smokes one 104 miles an hour. Just bad luck. Another freaking double play. Ugh, They'll eventually so snap out of this. Uh, but since the start of last baseball season, the Greek pitcher whose name I cannot say <laughs> has the second worst opponent's batting average in the majors, only ahead of Patrick Corbin. Mm. This guy kind of stinks, and you kind of made him look better than he is last night. Uh, those are the things you want to stop seeing because you got to pounce on bad pitchers, and I know it's easy to say, but like... Come on, guys. <laughs> you know, like heart of the orders got to get going versus yeah. bad pitches. And you didn't have JT in there, um, you know, but like, come on. Well, also because we're talking these bad about pitchers. Nick Cassiano struggles and wanting more from Trey and even Johan's struggles prior to last night. When you're going up against a bad pitcher like a Miles Michaelos. Nope. No, what? Ah. Nope. I'm sorry, Michaelis, 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 ah. my bad, my bad, my bad. Now you... That brings me great joy. You psyched joy. me out. You psyched my yep. dad. Yep. Michaelis. Uh -huh. When you go against Michaelis. Miles Michaelis, Bucky it's like Michael, like Michael Jackson nope. is uh, I am never going to get strike, it. Not those strikes. It's never going to happen. Michael is bad. Yeah. Bucky Baltalcomus. That's how you remember it. Michael is bad. <laughs> it's not going to work. So um, anyways, Miles Michaelis... Or as you mentioned with Corbin, when you go up against a pitcher that's not they got to good, that's struggling, you want to get to him more though. You want to get you want to get the bats rolling. You want to, I mean, yeah. Again, the Phillies won the, the series. Just you know, it is what it is. Would have loved to see more runs scored. But even last night, I mean, to have it be a down to another down to the wire game, have to go to extra innings. You're holding your breath. It shouldn't have been there. I'm glad they pulled out a win. A win is a win is a win. Even yeah, we'll get to one. some of that. But um, yeah, I, I think I would have liked. I think Yoro just, pounced on on it. But yeah, you can't I would let bad pitchers go seven innings on you. No, I mean, just come on, guys. No. Um, just so the Phillies hits. in their open. This is a positive. We're bringing it back to the positive because I don't want to go down that negative trench hole too much. Yeah, we're today. being positive, Patty. They uh, they have a really good chance now with Zach Wheeler on the mound today to take a series in St. Louis, and they will give themselves. The first opening road trip above 500 trip <laughs> since 2011. Mm. So we talk about good starts. There Starting on the road is a positive. Uh, and you're in a really good spot today to win another series. Uh, and you set yourself up pretty well coming home uh, to win the first series on the road. The first opening series on the road, that is, since 2011. So there's a positive for you, Renee. Yeah, exactly. And, and listen, when we know... When we take a look back and compare this season and past seasons, we talk about there's some aspects of the record and the start that's better than even last year. And so I know looking at it, you may, we're so close to it. It feels like this is frustrating, but in reality, the Phillies are actually off to a better start. Yeah, And kinda. today, uh, my fin one of my fantasy guys is back on the mound in Sunny Gray. Yeah, hopefully um, they rock his gonna ass. It's going to be, I, I know. I mean, you know, I was a little torn because I put him and in. And now it's like. I really want to see him rock his ass because if you have him on fantasy, take you down a couple pegs and the Phillies get a win. I've been, this I've been is like a win-win situation. I, I know, and I'm tempted to like not. I pulled him off my IL because he's back. 
Um, and unfortunately, the Phillies at bats have not been great. No, I mean, <laughs> so I'm like, Sonny Gray should do dec- decent, but he, I know the Cardinals manager, uh, Oliver Marmol, was mentioning how you know Sonny's saying he's 100. He want he he really wanted to get back. Um, he is limited to 65 pitches tonight, and um, you know it's gonna have Zach Thompson, who was supposed to start today. Is going to be held out of the rotation tonight. So Sonny Gray gets slotted in, and the Cardinals are hoping, and Sonny we trust. Um, but I'm, I'm excited for this matchup for my fantasy team, but also more for the Phillies because it's another chance. You're going up against Sonny Gray, who's been out with a hamstring. He's, he's just back for the first – this is his first game, and you have a chance to maybe light him up a little bit. All right, for you betters out there tonight that want to try and take advantage of Sonny Gray, here's how the Phillies have fared in their careers versus Sonny Gray. Trey Turner is eight for 21 with a double and a triple. Oh. Kyle Schwarber is only three for 21 with a double and a triple. A Kyle Schwarber triple, that's something. Uh, Castellanos, probably not the best night for him to get off the schneid. Three for 14, a double and a triple. Real Muto is three for 12 in his career with two triples. Bryce Harper, only two of 16 versus Sonny Gray in his career with nothing exciting, just two singles. Uh, Whit Merrifield, only one of 16. Um, Stott, 0 for 2. Stubbs, 0 for 2. Rojas, 0 for 1. Um, so not many guys on the Phillies team have taken advantage of Sonny Gray mm-hmm. starts in the past. Um, but he's on a pitch count, so we'll see what and happens. And he basically said he wants to – he's like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm back. I want to play. Put me in, coach. Um, but I, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to yeah. be interesting. So if, you, if you're considering any game props for tonight – uh, keep those numbers in mind or, of guys that could do well versus him. Uh, I do want to point out one thing from the St. Louis Cardinals that was incredibly impressive. Hmm. Uh, Mason wins arm. Oh, I know. My God. <laughs> so the Johan Rojas, uh, thank God he's the fastest kid alive because he beat out uh, a play that he's probably pretty safe on. Uh, against most shortstops, Mm -hmm. but the double play that Mason Wynn turned uh, on Bryce Harper's 104 mile an hour, 560 expected batting average rip, Mason Wynn threw that 98 miles an hour from second to first. It was a damn cannon. Mm -hmm. That kid's arm, like that jumped off the TV screen at you. Yeah, I I was kind of watching his arm in awe of like, Holy hell. I almost want to see him tested more to like see what you can do and not do versus him because that is a cannon. Yeah, I mean, the 22 years old, that play was like so smooth and such a like that it was shot it looked shot out of a cannon. It, really it was did. it was insane and it did pop and it was like, "Whoa." And it kind of caught you off guard because the Cardinals are a team, and I know... I think I let out an audible, holy shit. We were, we were joking about it yesterday, Tyler and I. Like, the Cardinals are a team that's a little bit older in age, and they're just kind of like... I feel like they're just classic baseball. And then you have, like, the occasional player on the team, and Mason Wynn being one of them, that just, like, jumps out on, off the page at you. And in that play, it was kind of like, whoa, where'd that come from? Um, but he, he seemed so comfortable, and it wasn't a surprise. It wasn't an oops. Like, that's something that looks like... He's got some more there that you haven't even seen yet. Yeah, that kid's, that was uh, impressive. That kid's arm is something. All yeah. right, the decisions that Rob Thompson made last night. Uh, a lot of people mm-hmm. probably a uh, little bit focused on that. Uh, I have absolutely no problem with what Rob Thompson did in terms of the bullpen last night. In fact, I'm very much in the camp of what he did last night was exactly the right thing to do. Uh, so he went to Jose Alvarado in the eighth inning. The Cardinals had three of four of the next batters were left-handed batters. Mm -hmm. This is the old, should they have a closer or should they have high leverage arms? This was the first time this year Hoffman and Alvarado flip-flopped roles. Uh, And, you know, maybe Orion gets in that mix, but it does feel like Rob's most comfortable with Jose as like the 70% closer and then Hoffman in the other, um, you know, spots. Uh, Hoffman ends up blowing the game in the ninth. Uh, but in our morning newsletter from Rich Hoffman, he does a great job. Everybody uh, sign up for it if you haven't yet. It's on allphly.com, and it's free, and it's yes. it's an absolutely kick-ass email. Rich points this out. He calls him Cousin Jeff, you know, Hoffman's. Yeah. Um, and this is, this, yeah. is, this is why I have no problem with it. 
That was Jeff Hoffman's 67th combined appearance for the Phillies since the start of last year and including last year's postseason. Mm -hmm. Only one time did he surrender more than the two earned runs he gave up last night. That was a fluke for Jeff Hoffman. Right. Jose Alvarado got through the lefties. I can live with what happened. Uh, Jeff Hoffman has been great, and he's earned that that uh, trust from the team to go in there in the ninth. Uh, and Jose Alvarado got the lefties done. It just it, it backfired on you, but I had no problem with what Rob Thompson did last night. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, just overall in the early parts of the season. Well, it's always going to happen, but naturally questioning about some of Rob's decision making. And I think this is one that we're not going to really see it pay off right now it's going to pay off later on in the season i mean as you mentioned jeff hoffman's numbers but also you know when you had that's the second blown save by jeff of the, for the year the third for the team and, and it i did do get squeezed feel like on a three two ball too that was kind of right it wasn't it wasn't was great kind of it wasn't great don't don't get me wrong because i in that moment i was like ah jeff how could you but i do think when you look at jose alvarado jeff hoffman those are two of the guys in the bullpen that I had the most faith in for the Phillies. Absolutely. I have no doubt in my mind. Like I never you felt like best two guys. I never felt like the Phillies were going to lose with Jeff Hoffman on the mound. I did worry as it continued. I'm like, oh no, a tie looks like it's gonna happen. Looks like we might be going to extra inning. But I do feel like you need to get these. If this is how you're gonna be rolling through instead of having a traditional closer, and yes, people are like, get a closer, get a closer. Well, no, instead of getting a traditional closer, you're gonna take this early part of the season and figure out how to one two punch with Jose and Jeff as something that you utilize down the stretch in those, in those, you know, end of game situations, knowing you have a Ryan Kirkering coming back this week. Today's um, a, he's eligible, but I think they said tomorrow he might be joining the team. Well, that's the, the thing. They want him to do one um, more appearance. They, yeah. Much like Taiwan, they have him on a very specific structured yeah, return, but he should be joining. Any so he day should now. exactly any day. Now, once he gets done, his, he's eligible today. His like, rotation of game day off game he should be back so it Which should be, be great. like what's today the 10th ninth yeah yeah it should be the 11th or the 13th at the latest and but i think that again like we kind of talked about yesterday i'm i'm all for in this early part of the year this is what you want to do try things out see what it looks like to have jeff hoffman coming in in the ninth to, as you know to close out the game if it doesn't work okay you can <laughs> You just break something? Uh, we're going to need some towels. Did you break the set? Um, we're going to need some paper towels, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> my water bottle just flew out of my hand. Jamie's water broke. <laughs> my water did break. I just saw ice go flying all over the place. Oh, boy. Uh, Tyler, a decent <laughs> amount of towels. <laughs> Clean up on aisle, Jamie. Wow. <laughs> that, uh... That was a decent amount of water there I spilled. I, I felt, I literally saw some of it go flying all over the place. Yeah. Guys, Jamie just tried to casually put his water bottle down and drop it. That was uh, condensation. I got a little slippery in my hand there. <laughs> slippery little goose. Uh, oh, man. Oh, wow. Luckily, it appears away I... from all electrical <laughs> outlets. So I think we're okay until we get some cleanup here. Uh, but yeah. Clean up on aisle one. <laughs> Apparently, Jeff Hoffman uh, has me all slippery. <laughs> Uh, so sorry oh about that. Oh my god! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Holy crap! Are you kidding? Yeah. Um, um, the point is, it is April. I know in the chat, um, as somebody was saying, I forgot even. Oh, John Sequel was saying, like, it's just April. I'm fine with trying things out now, seeing what works, and being able. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> it's getting worse. What's happening? Why did you throw it that way? There goes the P of P H O Y. Um, Cause I want it to be uh, oh, L H uh, H L Y for the rest H L Y for the rest of the Mickey show. Said Liberty Bell H L Y. Mickey said during this time it's a chance to get some some vocals going. Don't go chase. No, 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 we, we don't have to get there. <laughs> Right. I'm not allowed to sing. I, I, Some people don't like my singing. Renee, so you're gonna have to talk. People I genuinely thought Twitter. I could throw that a lot further oh, than it man. did, but it just like dive bombed out of my hand. <laughs> don't mind me. <laughs> we can't even see. It's fine. Jamie's just over there casually cleaning up his mess. What What do you do in the? Boo! This man. Oh, wait, um, okay. It? Well, <laughs> is that the first like real spill in PHLY history? <laughs> Has anybody else done that? Well, I did the one when we were did when wow words when we were doing our post game show, but nobody could tell it was my beer oh. that spilled. Well, that but it one wasn't was tough nearly, to miss. It wasn't nearly as bad and loud as yours was. Yeah, that was ice, uh, ice cubes rolling all over. That was I think a good should, like seventy percent of my water. Did you break it? 
I was taking fix. a sip and then I went to put it down and it just slipped. All right, back to the Phillies after oh my, my spill. Oh my gosh, Jamie's um, out here destroying things. Yeah, so Alec Bohm comes up huge Duh. and gets the win with a huge double. Uh, I think the Cardinals uh, blew the game. We talk about Nick Castellanos' struggles. Why the hell are you pitching to Bryson Stott? <laughs> what are you doing? Nick Castellanos is as close to an automatic as an out as there is. <sighs> Sucks to suck. Yeah, you I mean, that was just the, a boneheaded decision. And if we L, were doing the STLO, put the L in St. Louis show this morning, I would be furious mm -hmm. that they didn't pitch to get to Castellanos. Mm -hmm. uh, really, really, really dumb move. So thank you, St. Louis. Uh, but Alec Bohm comes up, you know, double order of onions and extras right away. Um, I go back and forth. I mostly hate the runner on second. But sometimes, like last night when it's early April and I want to get the hell to the national championship game and to bed, I didn't mind it. Most times I hate it. Last night I went, this is kind of cool that I don't have to wait up potentially another hour. It, it's like, it's going to be over pretty quickly. Wait, what? The runner on second rule in extras. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I was I, most, the of the the most of the time I what? hate it. Yeah. But like early April... National championships yeah, gone. Yeah. I want to flip channels. It was, like, not, it was it nice. It was time to, to move on to the next. Yeah. yeah. It was and like, I was ready to watch Purdue UConn. And, and by the time I flipped back on the big screen to the, the basketball game, it was already over. But yeah, I didn't hate the runner on second last night. And that's probably under Look the optics of um, the Phillies winning. Uh, if they had lost, I'd say I hate the Correct. runner on second. And this is stupid. And the Phillies didn't get it. You know, but they won. Uh, so last night I liked it. Yeah, I mean, I'm proud of you. That's growth. That's maturity because, uh, you know, I'm not, I know that's one of your pet peeves that you don't like. Um, I know, Mickey, your pet peeve is also the P. I will fix the P right now. I know it's a little off-centered. Oh, oh. Now that after Tyler, you guys just destroyed things around here. After Tyler, boys, 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 I wasn't, right? wasn't going to let Jamie be the only one to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you don't have to be a child to, like, <laughs> enjoy destruction of, uh, of like, we blocks. Be knocking, should we knock the blocks over every but, once in a while? Listen, just Renee, kinda, like, me, should we get you some Lincoln over? Logs me, so you can destroy That was day? the best. <laughs> me and a group of buddies at, like, 25 years old were uh, away for a weekend, and the best time that we had the entire weekend was going down to the, the creek bed and throwing rocks into the creek bed, yeah. which turned into throwing rocks at other rocks. Yeah. Oh like, you thought, it'd be like, it was almost like, you know, like like skeet shooting, right? Like, you throw up the rock, and somebody else throws a rock at the rock. Yeah, it sounds like a yeah, great you're time. you're like nine beers deep. It's the greatest thing yeah. ever. It sounds like an absolutely great time. Like, you know what else is a great time, Tyler? Saving money. What's happening over there? Uh, I had to mute my stupid computer. Luckily, it's not water on it. But saving <laughs> money is a great time. So I got to tell you about our friends at Truemark Financial Credit Union. Credit unions are the way to go. Don't go to these big name faceless banks that don't care about you. Truemark is a local company that cares about us here in the community. It's that simple. Credit unions are awesome. And when you join a credit union like Truemark Financial, you become a part owner, which means profits come back to you instead of going out to shareholders. Better rates, lower fees, and a better return on savings and more flexible options with all the same digital tools and technology that you're used to with everything else. And Truemark has local roots. I live about uh, eight minutes down the road from their headquarters in Fort Washington, and they have 24 branches all throughout the Philly area and Delaware Valley. They serve our community and our people right here at home. Becoming a member of a credit union has so many great benefits over being a customer at a bank. It's a total no-brainer, I'm telling you. So head over to truemark.com slash P-H-L-Y to learn more or to find a branch near you. That's truemark.com slash P-H-L-Y, federally insured by the NCUA. Well, we've got just dudes being dudes. Yes, hypothetical man, spiral out saying I need to destroy something. Um, yeah. I know Julian C. You're talking about it's the same boring, erratic offense. Same old, same old. Where you know where you're not going to get the same old, same old. That's right here at PHOI. You never know what you're going to get. Sometimes we destroy things. Sometimes we, we chug beer. Sometimes maybe beer gets spit out on laptops, as Bill Matz did. You never know what's going to happen here You'll at PHLY. Apparently. Oh, I wasn't okay. in that show, but that's what they said in the chat. All right. Uh, you never know what's going to happen here at PHLY. Never a dull moment because we're bringing you guys, as we're talking through sports, this fun interactive opportunity. And when you become a diehard member today, you have a chance to be a part of, of all the fun, whether it's our in-person events, you get discounts on those. We've got, uh, we just recently had our opening day 
you know, pregame show, watch party, postgame show. The Sixers were down at Deke's Barbecue. You know, we've been having a lot of in-person fun opportunities to hang out and watch games. We also have our Discord where you can have a chance to chat with us about whatever tomfoolery, whatever you want to get into. Sports, music, movies, entertainment, drinking. We've got a lot going on in Discord every single day in our specific channels for the specific teams, leagues, college sports. You can join us there to chat about it. You can also, as a diehard member, get discounts and get a chance to check out our merch because we have uh, new shirts dropping all the time. As we had opening day, we had some new Phillies merch that dropped to you guys, our Sunday Funday shirt. You're not wearing that today, are you? I am not. Oh, no. Okay. We it's also had our uh, our Defend the Bank shirt. We've got merch dropping. We've got events going on. Of course, we've got our live shows, articles, like our very own John Foley wrote on our allphoy.com website that you can check out. And so check it out today. Become a diehard. We've got some new exciting things coming up very soon because the NFL draft is going on this month. Uh, we've also got some other exciting things in the works. So we're just getting started here, and you guys can always check out more at allphly.com. Make sure you're following us on social media. Make sure you're staying up to date. And we appreciate every single one of you diehards that are uh, able to join us and have fun, even our fantasy baseball league, because some of us are really having – I'm not talking about my team, guys. I'm just saying in general – you know, we're having fun. This is so much fun playing fantasy baseball mm -hmm. and you guys can have fun. too. It is. Yeah. And hopefully <laughs> there's something we can tell you about here in the PHOY Phillies news for us uh, in coming days, which is very exciting. And uh, you guys will very much love it. I'll say that. Um, OK, before we move on to around Major League Baseball and look ahead to tonight's game, I did just want to mention the Phillies team ERA right now is 2.87. Uh, that's another extreme positive. When these bats do wake up, uh, the Phillies are going to be a force. And. Uh, you know, I saw, uh, who was it today, tweeting about the Braves, uh, Morosi or Buster Olney, whatever it was, I forget. Uh, he basically made the point that the Phillies, or the Braves have had the top five in the order play every single game this year. Now, your first hmm. thought, and I even tweeted, I was like, oh, it must be nice. It's all about being ready for September and October. That's the problem. And, like, you might disagree with how the Phillies handle days off and load management in the beginning of the season. But then you see the Braves, and they've played the top five in the order every single game. Mm -hmm. So does that take a toll on you by the end of the year? I mean, it, it certainly might. We're going to have to keep, a, mm -hmm. keep an eye on that one this year. Um, but I thought that was an interesting kind of note of like, okay, they've, they haven't given their guys in the top five a day off yet. Well, and the Phillies have already had two or three, depending on the player. So uh, exactly. it could be a, a hat tip to the Phillies uh, sports science department. We'll see. No, and that's a good point. I mean, perspective is everything because it is easy to get caught up in the early parts of April, even as we get into May and get, you know, completely over, you know, overly frustrated or whatever it may be. But it's such a long season and it's it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And for the Braves, Every year, notoriously, they have this, the last couple of years especially, had this breakout offensive production through the regular season. And by the time they get to the playoffs, the bats are cold. And when you look at the fact, and I personally know they've had their top five starting because I have a couple of their top five on my fantasy team. Oh, God. <laughs> But also because... I can't wait till you hit the, sh the skids I know, in fantasy. I'm really setting myself up yeah, big time. Yeah. And uh, Vince is in the chat hyping me up too. Like, <laughs> Hey, real quick, shout out. But, 69 people watching. What up? Yes. You love that. So <laughs> Tyler just looks at me with disgust. You just never have a, you never miss a chance. Amy. Oh, I mean, you know, it's not very often um, I see that and I gotta say it jumped well, out. Well, make sure you guys are hitting that thumbs up because yeah, I don't get a thumbs up for 69. Thumbs up. <laughs> oh my God. But it's such a long season and you look at the Braves, how they are rolling out the start of the season. You do all that. You still lost to the Mets yesterday. Yeah, that was great. Um, was L great to see LOL. that. I will say it was great. One positive thing I would say about the Braves, it was great to see the Hank Aaron tribute. In yes, honor very cool. Of, you know, Hank Aaron yesterday to have Joey his Votto had a really great cool grandson tweet about come it. out and throw the opening pitch. King Aaron. Yeah, the, um, all of baseball was, was reacting to it. I, I, loved, I loved that moment. It was great to see in honor of his the uh, anniversary of his 715th home run. The Braves got that right, but you're not managing your guys well. And I'm not, listen, not my, not my problem, not my team. You already have Spencer Strider who's dealing with an injury. You're going to now blow the top of your batting Please, order. Please, go for go, it, Snicker. I mean, if you want to, but I do think this is where for Rob Thompson, the Phillies, 
they do get some things right because, Jamie, there were even people complaining yesterday about the lineup that rolled out with Garrett Stubbs and Johan Rojas batting back-to-back. Oh, no, they're batting back-to-back. And then what happened? They literally helped win you the game. Here's a true given in sports. If you go online and complain about a lineup, that said lineup is about to do damage, and the guy you least expect is going to thrive that day. So anytime I go to complain about a lineup, I go, this is going to backfire big time. And it almost always does. Uh, so it's just one of those truancies, or not truancy, but a, a truism in sports. Um, okay, let's move. We'll get to tonight's game in, in our closing segment here. Uh, but there's a lot going around uh, Major League Baseball right now. Uh, I want to get to some of these Oof. things. Uh, Tim Kirkjian yesterday, who I love, um, said that the Phillies Braves is actually number one on his uh, baseball rivalry list right now. He doesn't mean historically, yeah. uh, but he thinks Phillies Braves is the best rivalry. And let me just read his other rivalries. Oh, no. At number two, he's got Yankees Astros. Number three, Padres Dodgers. Number four, Rangers Astros. And number five, he still has uh, Red Sox Yankees. But Phillies Braves gets the top rivalry from Tim Kirkjian. Uh, we'll have to see if we can get Tim on the show sometime. He's a his son works in town here. Uh, ni- lovely family, the Kirkjans. Yeah. Uh, so that was cool to see Phillies Braves because it is an awesome rivalry. But when you right think there. about it, right now across Major League Baseball, what other rivalry has not even only their fan bases, but I feel like the league invested. You know, like I feel like other people, even if you're not a Phillies or Braves fan, you enjoy watching them go head to head. The trash talking's great. The Braves fans are just so opposite of Phillies fans. Like, the way they are whiny and complain about everything, that's not Phillies fans. Um, And I do feel like there's just a clash of completely different, like, mentalities. Like, everybody thinks Phillies, oh, you throw trash and stuff. Meanwhile, that's the Braves. It's just, it's beautiful. It is great to see. It's And obviously, it helps that it's two of the best teams, too. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I agree with that because I was, as I was reading the list. And the boy last year. Like, it's it's great. It's like, and it's. Obviously, them meeting in the playoffs back to back years. It is a great rivalry right now. That's in baseball. I'm I'm all yeah. I agree, and it's a rivalry that heavily favors the Phillies. That makes it even better. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> one thing we talked about yesterday, I think we even Tyler made a short out of it, was the discussion about the the rash of injuries with the elbow and the UCL around Major League Oof. Baseball. Now, if you haven't uh, seen it yet, uh, and you want to watch a very interesting five minute discussion on it. Justin Verlander yesterday, he's making his rehab starts. He's close to returning for the Astros. I think he's got one more start before he returns. Uh, you know, he was caught up with yesterday in the, in the, the bowels of the stadium and asked mm-hmm. about the pitching problem. Um, and more or less, I'll just dummy down his answer to a real quick version, but you should watch his. Uh, I, for one, will admit, I, I love Justin Verlander. I think he's a, he's a cool dude and um you know when he gave the philly the fingers uh to phillies fans outside of the bus he was like yeah that's like you know i was when in rome basically and i was like that was a perfect answer i like you justin verlander uh but he more or less said there's no exact answer to the elbow problem that pitchers are facing he thinks it's a little bit of everything a little bit of Mm. youth being taught to throw as hard as they can earlier a little bit of pitch clock a little bit of dh a little bit of just Guys know they can do this now, so how do you put it back in the bag? He basically said there's no exact answer and that there's a little bit of like eight different things that are all contributing to this problem. Um, And me, uh, Tyler, and Zach Berman were having a discussion about it before the show started. I I don't know what the solution is because I don't think it's entirely... I I, I don't think you can go to the extreme and say it's pitch clock related, um, but there's clearly an outrageous uptick in UCL injuries around baseball. I think Justin Verlander's answer was very good and probably for the most part spot on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I saw a couple of people say like the DH excuse is pretty lame. It is, but when you think about, you know, potentially getting three batters off a game for a pitcher, like, you know, I, I could see that having a little bit of weight to it. It's obviously not a main reason, but to his point, it was just like yeah. all these things contribute to it. And I don't know how to fix it. Right. And I mean, I think the tough part is there is no easy fix. Like injury prevention is not as simple as, you know, change your shoes, change your throwing, change whatever, change the schedule. Because first of all, pitchers aren't even pitching. Starting pitchers aren't even pitching every day. You know, that's already something that helps alleviate. But there's no quick and easy fix. This is something that 
as the game continues to evolve, they're going to have to try to find ways to continue to evolve on the injury prevention. And the UCL is something that's so overused and has caused so many injuries. And there's, and it's, as we know, it's like, it's something that you just, it's a matter of time almost. You're just, it's like a ticking time bomb. You're just waiting to see who's next, who's going to get, who ha- who's going to have to get surgery next? Well, who's going to have to be out Rondo next? Rondo Valdez got and, scratched for a start yesterday right. to elbow soreness. Again, it's like. And every time you hear any sign of like elbow soreness or anything like that, you're like, oh, no, not again. It's just, it's like ACLs in soccer. And I'm, I'm not allowed to talk about soccer on the show, apparently. Um, it's like ACLs in soccer. There are certain injuries that you're just like holding your breath because you know it's, it's only a matter of time. I don't know what that solution looks like, but I think what they're going to have to do, much like as your buddy Justin's talking about, have these conversations and honestly have these open, you know, whether bringing in doctors, bringing in current former pitchers, talk, figuring out what's, where you can possibly tweak things because I don't think it's going to be one oh, overall. I don't know how you get guys to not throw 101, 102 miles an hour. Right. Like if they know they and can. even on the youth level, you can't say, because can, you, a, can you make a rule like, oh, you're not allowed to throw I mean, over. if you're throwing 101 at Vanderbilt, you're going to get drafted. You know what I mean? Right. Like, how do you tell a kid? That's like no, saying don't, don't dunk. do that. Hey, don't dunk because be you're probably like going to get more injured. Jamie Moyer or Tim <laughs> Wakefield. Don't be like uh, a guy that can hit 104. It's, so it's it was a very interesting answer from Justin Verlander. And if you're a baseball nerd, I would encourage you uh, to listen yeah. to it. All right, a couple highlights around Major League Baseball last night. Mike Trout is oh on gosh. an absolute tear to start the year. His last 10 home runs, anybody want to take a guess at how many RBIs those 10 home runs have? 10. You guessed it, Tyler. (laughs) 10 RBIs in his last 10 home runs. The Angels don't deserve him. I really, look, I'm not going to sit here and give you the pipe dream of the Phillies getting Mike Trout. It would clearly be awesome. Uh, Do I want to inherit that contract? No, not really. But for the sake of (laughs) baseball, Mike Trout needs to get the F out of the Angels really organization. Does. Like yesterday. Please ask out of there, Mike Trout. You deserve better. When healthy, you are a legit modern-day Mickey Mantle. Get the hell out of that organization. All it takes for you is to say, trade me at this point. Uh, and it needs to be done for the sake of the game. Like, this dude is one of the greatest talents we've ever seen. And he had one playoff appearance, which I think was a three-game series, and they went down 2-1. Uh, I forget to hit. Was it the Kansas City Royals the year they won the World Series? I think was it Trout's was actually because it was a long. It was a long time. It was ago. a long time. I think ago. that was I'm Trout's sure. only playoff series, and it was a three-game yeah. series. Get out of there, Mike Trout. It looks like as long as he can stay healthy, Mike Trout is Mike Trout again. Uh, his issue has only ever been health, um, and he smoked another one last night. That was a damn moonshot. I mean, Mike Trout blink three times if you need help. Yeah. I mean, like it just. To be with the Angels, it's such a wasted talent. And right now, um, through 10 games, to have five home runs. But he's smashing balls. Like He's, he's killing them. He's, he, he had a he triple. He had the golf shot we talked had, about last week from right. his knees that he sent like He had 6, a triple, feet. an RBI triple. It was his first triple uh, of the year. But he had one all of last year because he's had so many injuries. And that's what makes it worse. How many times do we see these athletes that are stuck on these teams? You're not going to make the playoffs. They playoff. don't deserve You're you. You're not good. They don't deserve you. You're an all-star. You're a superstar. You're, you know, I was um looking at something from um that, like a, a throwback tweet from, I want to say, I don't even know what year it was, but it was early Mike Trout years. And they were saying in it, like, oh, this guy, it was, the, it was a locker room clip. And it was like, this guy has the potential to be one of the best to ever play baseball. And I'm like, here we are, fast forward. He still is, but he's still stuck on a bad team. Yeah, get out of there, And Mike. so you're only doing a disservice because you could be somewhere at least as a contender for a playoff spot. Yeah, I want to see Mike Trout play in playoff baseball. I would love that. Yeah, I, I would think every, love every that. baseball at fan should want to see that. At least get a team that's that. on the cusp of being in the playoffs, let alone the Angels, who we know it's it's Anthony Rendon. It's all kinds of foolishness. We know they're not going to make the playoffs. All right, a couple other Ugh. notes around Major League Baseball last night. Shohei Otani also uh, blasted one out of the stadium. <laughs> Uh, Jordan Alvarez, I think, tried to end the eclipse uh, by sending a ball to it. Uh, he hit another absolute piss missile last night. Uh, when that guy connects, boy, that's fun to watch. Uh, the Marlins, we didn't give them credit yesterday, Renee. They did win a game the day previously. Uh, so that was very they cool did. to they see. They beat the Cardinals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we mentioned it briefly, but Framber Valdez was scratched with elbow soreness. Hopefully that's not uh, what we all think and fear. Oh, no. uh, and Blake Snell made his debut with the Giants yesterday. 
Uh, only went four innings, wasn't spectacular by any means, but he was behind in spring training. Mm -hmm. He's starting the season, you know, slow and on a pitch count. So you can't really look too much into that. Uh, but he did start last night. Yeah, uh, and then there was, um, you got to talk about Ellie De La Cruz. Oh, and uh, the Ellie made, De La Cruz inside the yeah, park home run. Uh, that, and also that had a 450 foot plus home run. On top of that, it's the first player since that cast began, began tracking in 2015 to accomplish both in the same game. Wow. It was, and he was like, he was <coughs> flying. Under 15 <clears throat> seconds, it took him to round the bases in that inside the park home run. Just insane, insane, insane. But one other thing I wanted to hit on, Jamie, before we move on. Jillian? Um, Yes, I wanted to hit on Jillian, who Jillian Al Bayati, who plays baseball for Cal State San Marcos, made history herself because yesterday uh, she became the second player, or this week, she became the second player in collegiate history and the first in D2 to play baseball and softball on the same day. She played in two games in one day. She's been playing with Cal State's baseball team, of course. And listen, the game is, as we talked about the game evolving, we're also seeing it evolve on the women's side where we're seeing more and more women that are playing baseball and Jillian's playing both. So shout out to Jillian Albayati uh, with Cal State San Marcos for that accomplishment. That's awesome. Uh, hopefully Skylar can uh, follow her in her footsteps because when we were walking out the uh, door today to go to the car, uh, my nephew, we brought down like his batting net. We were mm -hmm. throwing him pitches and practicing with him the other day. It's still in our yard. And Skylar on the way to the car goes, Dad, can I just take one swing before oh. school? And I went, of course you can. Absolutely. Go get that ball on the tee and <laughs> smack it, girl. Um, so that was <laughs> very cool girl. for Julian. Uh, and one last thing before we move on to tonight's game. Uh, Shane Bieber, I don't know if it was a press conference or a scrum or whatever yesterday. Uh, you talk about the, the slew of elbow injuries. Yeah. He almost teared up, and it was really tough to watch because he said he finally started falling in love with pitching again. Yeah. And he had oh. such a strong start to the year, and he said all the hard work he had put in, he was finally seeing the results of – and he felt like he was on a fast track back to being what he thought he could. Mm -hmm. And to hear him say, I started falling in love with pitching again. I was like, ah, damn, that cuts you to your core. So Listen, uh, sports have a way of breaking your heart over and over again. You do all this work to rehab or you do all this work to even just get yourself in a good place. And then out of the blue, you get some elbow soreness, your yeah. knee tweaks, you step funny. You're out for another year or two years, depending on what the injury is. You know, UCLs, Achilles, ACLs, like some of these injuries are just insane. And I, I felt that is such like one of those emotional moments where you, regardless who you're a fan of, yeah, like you like, empathize oh, because you're man. like, dang it. I, I, we don't, <laughs> we don't want to see you get hurt. We just want to see you play bad. You know, we don't want to, we just want to see the Phillies win. We don't want to see, you know, other teams succeed, but we don't want you to get hurt in order for the Phillies to be successful. It's just, it's heartbreaking yeah. to see. On another note, Tyler just sent me a screenshot of Jordan Alvarez's um, oh my gosh. Uh, baseball savant. Uh, you know, his, what do you, what do you call that chart? The batting chart on baseball savant? Yeah, I mean, the, you know, it's... It's pretty much, you know, where they rank everything on the 100 scale. Yeah, it's um, off the charts. 99, 97, 99, 96, 99, 96, 93. Um, mm. and then his, his, his run, his, uh, base running run value is only four. <laughs> so I don't know, Jamie, I'm not so You're, sold on this guy. Jordan Alvarez is a freak. He's a, he's a, a, a monster. Yes. He, he might he, be the, he might be the, the best pure power hitter in baseball right now. And, I, and I'm not sure it's particularly close. Uh, I don't disagree That's with wild. you there. Yeah. Well, uh, Otani I, when, you know, Otani, Jordan's a better, uh, I don't know how to say this, a better pure power guy, but Otani's. Home run, like a judge in Otani's home runs, though, are like beautiful. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really good. I will say, though, um, one thing I do disagree on Reese Hoskins feeling like he's going to get booed. One thing I do agree on Angel Hernandez needs to get booed. I know we're short on time, but I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, Reese is, Reese is lying. Don't to, know how you're still at um, foul territory. But Reese, Come on, Reese. You're going to get a standing ovation here. Yeah. If you hit a home run in the game and the Brewers win, you'll probably get the just full boos, but you're absolutely right. getting an ovation when you come to town. I All right, that Tyler, we have some field designs. Um, <laughs> yuck. Uh, so with the new City Connect uniforms, mm. the Phillies tweeted this out yesterday and said, vote on which field you want for City Connect Friday nights. Um, I don't mind the shading of the grass, but the logo in center field, both of them stink. Uh, love, Philly. I don't care which one gets voted on. I don't like them. 
That's my take. Does anybody like these? Anybody here's, in the chat? Here's my issue. Like, Renee, stop Tyler. trying to force. They said the the font. They they actually explained the reasoning behind every component of the city connects. The font, the colors. We understand the colors. The font. The flag. We went down to the Wildwood the font, Boardwalk last summer, and we liked their knockoff jerseys. And no, the font has something to do with um, the lightning. the grinds of Philly as this like do we need it you on know the field blue too? collar place. Like it's supposed to connect and relate with. You know, being blue collar, there's there's some weird. It to me, it was a whole lot of hoopla. Yeah. Because and I know you does anybody that have good. a but it's preference? not it's not it's not good. They're, They're gonna go with one of them. Do you I, have a preference? I no, I don't like either of them. I don't like just make it a regular. I don't know what I would want to see. I think just a regular like Philly without the weird font. Love is not bad, but I feel like the spacing of that looked really awkward and. I know that's the patch on the jersey, but it's terrible. It's just not good. Tyler, I know people are like, who, the comes, who comes up nah, with these? I mean, either neither of them are like super awesome. Yeah, um, it's just not good. Yeah, but by the way, on that, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna retract one thing off that I, the Jordan uh -oh. comment that I made. Not particularly close. Slash that out. I'm. I, I still think I will be happy to stop with he might be the best power hit pure power hitter. Well, he might in baseball. be the most powerful. Does but that make saying, sense? So, and then I I put a comma. And I don't think it's particularly close. Yeah, slash that out. Uh, I don't know why. He might or... be the most powerful, but Judge and Otani just hit like beautiful. Sure, and, and that's that's shots. why I'm slashing that yeah. portion of the mm -hmm. comment out. But like, that guy had 31 home runs in 400 at bats. Yeah, he's a, he's last a beast. year. Yeah. He only had 410 at bats. I can't go with either. I think the love. Then I think again, looks better. Then again, Going I guess back, I'm seeing in the chat. But... Shohei only had 497, and he had 44. So like, I mean, listen. If you're gonna take either of them to be pure you're power in a hitters, good situation yeah, with like, either of those three, because those numbers you ran, uh, Otani, 99, 96, 99, 99, 197. <laughs> I, I, I think you, if, if you lost out on the Otani power sweepstakes oh, and, and landed the Jordan Alvarez power sweepstakes, yeah. you would not be all, all that concerned. Yeah. Um, all right. So the game tonight, 7:45 start. I missed that 6:45 start. Damn Midwest time zone. Damn mm -hmm. central time zone. Uh, on your Bet Park Sportsbook, Zach Wheeler versus Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray, as Renee mentioned earlier, on a 65 pitch pitch count. The Phillies are minus 125 on the money line, plus 133 on the run line. The over under on this says pitcher's duel, seven and a half is the total there. Um, we went through the numbers against Gray earlier. It, you know, look, it's a first start. We just talked about Blake Snell. Uh, he was behind not because of an injury, but Sonny Gray behind because of a little bit of an injury. Mm -hmm. uh, but nonetheless, first start, pitch count. Zach Wheeler, I guess you can say, with Spencer Strider down as the best pitcher in the NL. It would be great to take advantage of this and get the series winning game, too. Yeah. I, I like the Phillies tonight. I do. I do, too. I do, too. I think for the return of Sonny Gray for St. Louis tonight, that's going to be their small victory of, like, Regardless what the result is, they, they're going to be happy they got Sonny Gray back. I think this is a great chance for the Phillies to pounce on, you know, a, a Cardinals team that's rehabbing quite literally and continue with what we saw in Sparks yesterday for, you know, more consistently throughout the game. And I think they should win this one tonight. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, any strong feeling the Phillies take care of business? They should. I mean, I think that, the, like you guys said, between the fact that Zach Wheeler gets the start and the fact that Sonny Gray is on a pitch count today, um, you know, you should be able to tax their bullpen a little bit, which it's not a bad bullpen. I mean, statistically speaking, you would, the numbers don't jump out to you. I know like Matt Libertor pitched last night and he had like a five ERA coming into that game and he pitched pretty well in his, uh, his uh, bullpen role last night. The but Phillies got worked a little bit too. Yeah, but it's not a bad bullpen that, they, uh, that they've that they put together. It's not as good as it's been in years past, but I think that you have an opportunity to tax that bullpen today. I, I think today you should be striving for a series win. Yeah, absolutely. And this is breaking news. Another pitcher with right elbow. No. Uh, Nick Pavetta was just placed on the IL with a right elbow flexor strain. This is out of control what's happening in Major League Baseball. Uh, it's going to continue to be a major talking point throughout the story. Uh, and as always, baseball is unfortunately in a war of attrition. And these elbow injuries are out of control. So for the next two days, we're going to be doing post-game shows. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. we have the business person special down in St. Louis on getaway day. Um, so we should be on around 345-4-ish. Yeah. Something in that neighborhood. 
Uh, and then on Thursday, we'll be doing the post-game show uh, after the night game. So that's where you can catch Sweet. us the next two days. Friday, back to our normal 11 a.m. slot. Uh, but back-to-back post-game shows coming up here. Thank you to everybody in the chat. If you can give us a thumbs up on your way out of here, we appreciate you. Uh, don't don't be afraid to tell all your friends and family of tell all a the great. And tell a friend. Hide your hide your wife. Hide your kids. What was that guy? Remember that guy? Hide your wife. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hide but your kids. Hide your wife. Hide we'll, your. We'll tell your kids. Yeah. Tell your wife about PHLY. <laughs> we got a lot of great things going on. Anthony Gargano, 9 a.m. every morning. We're very now that we're in season. Sixers and Flyers. Well, maybe Flyers. Playoff runs happening. The Sixers are damn exciting. And of mm. course, the Eagles draft coming up. So we got a lot of great stuff. Uh, going on here at PHLY. Tell people about it, please. Um, but we love all of you for hanging out with us today. Thank you, as always, for Tyler, Renee. I'm Jamie. Have a great <laughs> rest of the Tuesday on this beautiful weather day here in Philadelphia. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. We all silly like the.